the Deliverance Church have been covering a series. And uh, we've been covering a series on spiritual disciplines. And among the many things that we have covered on the, is the matter of uh, the discipline of meditation. And these disciplines are categorized. All right? Let me start from there. They are categorized. The discipline of meditations, prayer, fasting, study of the word are classified in what we call an outward discipline. And then the discipline of simplicity, solitude, submission, and service to God is what we call an inward discipline. Then the discipline of confession, worship, guidance, and celebration are classified in a group that we call corporate discipline. So for the last few weeks, let me say four or five weeks, we've gone through meditation, we've gone through solitude and submission, we've gone through servanthood, we've also gone through confession. And so today I want us to move on, we want to look at the discipline of prayer. And that's what we'll be looking at this morning. Now, you'll agree with me that uh, prayer is one of those very wide subjects. I want to believe that this is one of those subjects you cannot just exhaustively take care of in one sitting in less than an hour. And, um, and so I want us to uh, to go through a few scriptures as we think about prayer. But before I do that, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate and to honor the grace of our father in the house, uh, Bishop in the absentia, Bishop and Mama Alice, we honor you, I honor you, and thank you for allowing uh, God for you to hearken to the voice of God to, be, to, to start this ministry. We want, we, we, some of us, we count it a privilege to ride on your back even as we continue to serve in the vineyard together with you. And so, when I'm thinking about prayer, I'm seeing a very wide subject. And you'll agree with me, everyone desires to have each prayer they make answered. But then, one, one time I was teaching children, uh, children in, uh, in, in Sunday school. And uh, I was talking on the topic on prayer. And I asked a class, a grade five pupil, to help me understand what they understand by prayer. So one of the answers I got from this grade five pupil is that... Uh, Prayer is talking to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. Prayer is talking to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. And uh, in response to this member of Young Life's Church, I took that point and I wanted to strengthen it. And to, to, today, I want us to look at it from another angle. And I've given it a definition that prayer is talking to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Effective fervent prayer becomes effective when you are praying in the Spirit. You are praying in the influence of the Spirit of God. And so prayer is just not raising your voice at the top and, and, and screaming so many words and presenting a long list and then you go away. Prayer also demands a time when you sit back and listen. What does God say about this situation? It's one thing to talk to God. It's another thing also to sit back and listen to what God is saying. And so this morning, um, I want to address us in the area of effective, fervent prayer. 
What does effective fervent prayer mean to you? And I want to say that prayer becomes effective and it only becomes effective when we receive tangible answers from the Lord. In others, what am I saying? Utamu wa maombi ni nyakati ambavuzo maombi zinajibiwa. And that's why you are singing that song, Unajibu Maombi. The Lord answers prayer. But I also want to acknowledge and submit to us that the truth is, the more you pray, before prayer changes things, prayer changes you. Prayer changes your attitude. Prayer changes your, your, your relationship with God. Prayer is amazing if you look at it from the right attitude. Vanessa Sifio. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 verses 2. What does it say? Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 verses... Ecclesiastes, not James. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 verses 2. All right. Um, be quick with, with our mouth or not by hashi in your heart to just speak anything before God. Okay? God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. In other words, the wise man who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes is telling us, be choosy in your words. Don't just kuropoka. There is a time to speak to God. There is a time to sit back and hear and allow the Lord to speak to us. And uh, why is it important to be choosing your words. Psalms chapter number one verses, uh, chapter 139 verses four, the Bible says, you know what I'm, I'm, I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. God knows every prayer before you even say it, okay? He hears every word before you say it. Come on, speak to us now, Lord. Sunday school, one of the most amazing songs that we've sung over the years is God knows every prayer before you even pray it. He hears every word before you even say it. Come on, he's listening to you now. And one of those amazing songs that we enjoy with the kids outside there reminds us that God knows your intention. Before even, if you, you, before even you utter any word. So God knows what you are going to say even before you say it. And that is a great thing to know. He even know your thought. He even know your attitude even when you are approaching him in prayer. The book of Luke chapter number 11 verses 13 says, So if you sinful people who know to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The scripture is bringing us to another attention. The need, it should be a desperate need of every believer that deep inside you, you are able to groan in the spirit. You are able to pray in the spirit. And if you have not yet been baptized, unless you start thirsting and hungering for the spirit of God to fill your heart, prayer becomes a challenge. Prayer becomes easy when it is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so the father is telling you, you guys, you parents, you know how to choose gifts. You know how to buy birthday gifts, Christmas gifts. But how much more is the father in heaven? who is willing, more than willing to give you his spirit if you ask. According to Romans chapter number 8, verses 28, 26, sorry, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us. With what? With groaning that cannot be expressed in words. And what a wonderful Father, Holy Father we have. God the Father, uh, God the Father gives us the Holy Spirit so we can pray 
for hard things even when we don't know how, which kind of words to speak. Praise be to God. Once in a while you can look back over time and ask yourself a question. From January to August, 31st August ended yesterday. Those are eight months. I've been praying and I've been talking to God over many things. I want to do an evaluation out of the many prayers that I've presented before God. How many prayers have been answered? And that brings me to a very important need that every believer, every Christian ought to have. And this is what I call prayer journal. Do you have a prayer journal? I must confess that uh, when I was in college and a few years even after college, I've been keeping a prayer journal. But there is a place I must confess that I retreated. Not taking so much consideration of prayer journal. But recently I went back and I was doing a, a preview since the year began. And I've been asking myself, KK or pa Kaunda, what have you been telling God? And out of so many of those prayers, what has the Lord answered? Do you have a prayer journal? I want to confess that the beauty of prayer is when you get your answers from the Lord. You look back and confess that mm, there was this time my son or my daughter was stuck and there were school fees needed and somehow, somewhere, the Lord provided. There's this time when so-and-so was sick and somehow, somewhere, the Lord brought an answer. There is this time when these things and that thing happen and you can count your many blessings, naming them one after the other because those are prayers that have been answered. I want to confess again, the beauty and the joy of prayer is to receive answers. And Jesus gives, gives us a hint on uh, the kind of prayer that we should pray. Jesus is the greatest model and he modeled a prayer. And at one point he's teaching his, uh, his, his, his disciples how to pray. This one you can pick from the book of Matthew chapter number 6. From verse 5 to 14. Uh, many people call it the Lord's prayer. Maybe you can do it. You can pray this prayer together. All of us, let's go. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, when you have received their reward in full, they have received their reward in, in full, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. And when your father who sees what is done in the secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be hurt because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need even before you ask him. Mm -hmm. This then is how you should pray. How? Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Okay? And so that prayer, uh, that prayer, that prayer, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to it in a short while. I want us to be looking one verse after the other why it was a model kind of prayer. But before we, we get to that point, there is this thing that is coming up and I'm asking myself, why do some prayers take so long to be answered and some prayers take such a short time? Unasikia uyu alikuwa kwa naomba and then all of a sudden when people are giving testimony, you hear testimony after testimony after testimony and maybe you are in a home fellowship and it's like 
every time people are giving a testimony but you don't have anything to tell people of what God has done. Why? Simply because you can't remember the last time when your prayers were answered. And the question is, what could be hindering? What are the barriers of prayer? What could be hindering us not to receive answers to our prayer? Number one, living a double standard kind of life. Trying to be lukewarm. Today you are born again, so spirit-filled. Waking up in the morning and it's like you are found in prayer in all the meetings. Tomorrow you are found in the wrong place. Double standard of life could hinder our prayers. Number two, unforgiveness, bitterness, pursuit of revenge. And there are times when people will hurt you in this life as long as you are living with people, you will be hurt left, right, and center. But may you start preparing yourself and develop an attitude of letting go. I must confess, in the past, my, in, my, in my years when I was growing as a believer, there are times I would take offense and I would take it so seriously. It would take time for me to let go. But I realize that many times I take long to let go. The, le the lack of letting go is hurting me instead. And it hinders many other things in a Christian walk. I, want, I don't want to believe that it's only me who has been affected in the past. But I want to believe that there are believers who are listening to me and listening to the voice today. That you've been hurt so much. You've been rejected. You've been looked down upon. And sometimes it's so easy for you to feel like you want to revenge. I want to remind us that the Bible tells us that revenge belongs to the Lord. It's not your business to revenge. Allow the Lord. Commit that whatever, whoever commit that person to the Lord and allow yourself to enjoy freedom of letting go out of bitterness and this is the beginning of your prayers getting answers. Another thing that is a barrier to prayer is unbelief and the doubts. You pray but you are not very sure. That's a very serious situation. You pray but you still not believing that God is able to respond to that specific need. And belief and doubt hinders us from enjoying answers that comes from God. The last, the other one is pride. Kiburi. Pride is so bad. I wish I would have a time I would speak, uh, I would take a whole time to talk about pride. But one thing that I've seen with the time, and this is one reason why God sometimes takes time to, to release uh, resources in our hands. There are people who, because of their level of maturity in the Lord, the moment God blesses them with the status and they have grown high, they forget where they came from. They start looking down on people. They start stepping on people. And these are the moments that, that God looks at you and says, mm, did I make a mistake to bless you with this house? Did I make a mistake to bless you with these riches? I think for the sake of your soul going to heaven, I will withdraw them from you. And realize that many people suffer a lot of lack simply because what used to be was, was, to, was to be for them has been withdrawn because look, God looks at the future and sees the level of pride that would hinder this person to make it to heaven. The other time, uh, our, one of our fathers in the land, Bishop JB, was joking and saying that there are days when people will get to heaven and then you will start crying. And why will you be crying? You'll be crying because there is a moment when the angels are going to take you through the things that you should have enjoyed on earth, which you could not enjoy. Maybe simply because of pride, doubt, and unbelief. Lastly, love for worldly glory and wealth. The moments you start puffing up yourself that you are the hero, you are the champion, Forgetting that behind the scene, God made you who you are. Those are the moments when God also takes his time to respond to our prayers. Why do some prayers get answered so fast? There are several factors in the life of a Christian, I believe, that the Lord is looking into when he wants to respond to your prayers. Amen. And I want us to go back to the Lord's Prayer that we just did a few minutes ago. 
The Bible says God is seeking for a, for a prayer that is full of worship. I want to say God is looking for a prayer that is full of worship to his name. When Jesus modeled on prayer and he said, our father who art in heaven, what is he saying? This is one thing that God cannot do to himself. He seeks a right heart worship, a worship in the spirit. The moment God looks at your heart and he sees a worshiper who worship in the spirit, he draws closer. Mm, I want to hear more from you, son. I want to hear more from you, daughter. Why? Because down deep in your spirit, you have released a worship that he cannot worship himself. Somebody say that God has only one weakness. He do not know how to worship himself. He is a just and a humble God. And that's why we need to, to copy his character. Then uh, the, the Bible talks about, uh, about the, thy kingdom come. That, that, that part of prayer. The second part is thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come presents a calling of a heavenly divinity to release destiny connectors that touches humanity. The moment we start calling thy kingdom come, we are actually saying the kingship, the rulership of the heavenly realm should come down and dwell among you and with you. The moment the king lives and dwells among you, things changes. Those are, the, those are the moments when your friendship, your fellowship with God is so tight, you enjoy every minute that you spend with God. And when his kingdom is surrounded with you, there are few things that cannot stay together with the king of kings. One of them is sickness. Sickness disappears because the king is ruling. Poverty disappears because the king is ruling. Thy kingdom come. Making your prayer to be in line with the will of God. And that, that reminds me of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that part of phrase reminds me in, the, in verse 10. Making your prayer to be in line with his will and his purpose. The moment you pray according to his purpose and his will, then those are the, the, the kind of quality prayers that God seeks to give an answer. Then give us our daily bread. Give us our daily bread is combining two things. It desires you to be an intercessor. You intercede. Not be, don't be so selfish whereby you are seeking to pray for everything that matters to you, forgetting that there are people that need your prayers. There are moments when also God puts a balance. Okay, you've been asking for this and this and this and this. But how many people have you presented before me? How come your prayers are always about you and not about others? Do you spend time to intercede for your church? Do you spend time to, in, to intercede for your employer? Do you take time to intercede even for those ones who appears like they don't like you? Do you take time to intercede for them? Make your prayer and supplication with no selfish ambition. Then, and forgive our debtors as we forgive, uh, 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 forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And I want to believe that in this matter, this particular point, uh, the Lord desires to give us a breakthrough by releasing people in your life who have offended you in the past and who could be even plotting to, uh, and plotting or planning to offend you. In other words, just like uh, one time a prophet passed by here and was telling us that in life you are going to face different types of storm. Either you are entering one or you are leaving another. In the same same case as you, as long as you interact with the people and I said earlier, you are bound to come across people who will cross your lines in different ways. But the faster you release them, the faster you are opening your room for an answered prayer. Lastly, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Prayer, pray over your heart and mind that the enemy will not find a fertile ground to plant 
hatred, enmity, to plant everything that is negative, that is causing your relationship with people be, to become a challenge. Because your mind and your heart is the greatest battleground. You win the battle in your mind and heart, you have good relationship with people and you have good relationship with God. Prayer. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you pray, pray in faith knowing that all powers, all authority as king in heaven and on earth is released to you. You are honoring the kingship of God. And because of that honor, God is interested because your prayer is also what? Mingled up with faith. If I was in Anglican Church, I would say our second reading comes from the book of Luke chapter number 18. And I'm also going to read from verse 1 to those verses. We are going to be looking at Luke chapter number 18. And then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Okay? Pray and not give up. And I want to start with the first part. I'll be explaining this as we go. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. That scripture says, and not to give up. I want to say that, I want to submit to us that prayer is very key. It is the key that unlocks heavenly riches through Christ Jesus. It, is the ele it needs the element of persistence in, in our prayer and you pick that the theme of, of the, the, the key thing that comes out the book of Luke chapter number 18, those, those verses, is the theme of persistence. It's a story about a poor widow, and you look at this poor widow, is without any influence. He has no influence. But you wonder how he was able to bend the will of unjust judge until the judge would respond to her heart cry. God is looking for persistence. You may not be so influential, but you know how to do your wars on your knees. Talk less, pray more, and you see what God can do. In verse 3, Luke 18 verse 3, we should put it there, yeah? And there was a widow that in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And you know, this widow place a demand on this unjust judge that he needs justice. And there are many things that we need justice for. But the best justice is not to go on the street and throw stones. The best justice is to go on your knees and call on the heavenly father. And at the beginning, when you read that scripture, at the beginning, the, 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 the judge could not pay attention. But he kept on. The judge started feeling like he's being weighed down. Prayer will make people change their mind in favor of you. There are those things that you've been trusting God to do and it's like it's not happening. God wants you to continue being persistent. You become so persistent until that promotion that somebody has been sitting on, he says, ah, uyu nimemsumbua kutosha. Now it is time to let it go. It's coming to you out of favor, not because of anything, but because you've known the truth about being persistent in waiting on God. Verse 7, the evil judge delayed his response to the poor widow but God is not unjust that you can compare him with the unjust judge. A few things that you can pick from that part of that story. At times God brings delay our way depending on what is being asked. But his delay is not denial. He has not denied you. He has just delayed it for his own purpose. The Bible also tells us that all things work for good to them who love the Lord. Romans 8, 28. 
all things work for good to them who love the Lord. And you know, sometimes the Lord may delay a gift or a blessing and you start cursing God. Kumbi, he has gone ahead and he saw the danger that if this blessing would come to you now, it will put your heart, your life in danger. It is for all this reason. He, he, he has a very good reason sometimes why he allow those delays. I'm calling it wise reasons. He has wise reasons. And it's for his purpose depending on what you are asking for. The question is, has your prayer been made in faith or it has been made out of fleshly desire? When you look at Luke chapter number 18 verses 8, the heavenly father is more than willing to respond to your prayer speedily. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly, speedily. However, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Lord wants to respond to our prayers today. He would like to assure someone in our midst today that he is still a prayer answering God. And that when he comes, he desires to come and find faith, active faith in your life. Faith in our walk with him. Faith in trusting in him. Faith in your prayers. The scripture is asking this amazing question, when Christ shall come, will he find faith on earth? And I want you to replace that word earth with your name. When faith comes, will Jesus find faith in Naomi, in Kaunda, in Jen? Will faith, will the Lord find faith in us? Remember, lack of faith will not only hinder him from coming back, but he'll also hinder him from releasing the many blessings that he has in store for you. As I conclude our service this morning, the week that has just passed by was a Rema first week. And I want to believe a number of you could have found their way to the stadium. I also had an opportunity to go, but virtually, not physically. And I want to summarize a few things that one of the, the speaker, there are a few things that I took home that have really blessed me. And I thought it's part and parcel of this sharing when you are thinking about the discipline of prayer. One of the servants of God, and I'll allow me to quote his name, is, is Joshua Selman, he brought up a very important talk when he was winding up a session. God is a God who answers prayer and is more than willing to respond to your prayer. But there are three things that you remember how God answers prayer. Number one, God answers prayer by supernatural intervention. And I want to specifically quote his words. He says, there are times God step up to bring a miracle your way for his own glory. It could be physical healing, it could be financial miracle, or use all other types of supernatural manifestation. But he is saying that God answers prayer in a supernatural way. I don't know whether you have experienced a supernatural miracle. Another thing, God answers prayer through the ministry of men. This is one major way through which God answers prayer. And he, and he bring to us uh, Numbers 1. Numbers 1, 3 to 5, if you have it, please. The Bible says, you and Aaron are to count according to their, their division. All the men in Israel who are 20 years old or more, and able to serve in the army. Verse 4. One man from each tribe, each of them, the head of his family, is to help you. Then, these are the names of the men who are to assist you from Reuben, Aluza, son of Shadu, and then the list continues. 
What is the point on that one? God will not come, he's a spirit, he will not come in his spiritual way to drop a miracle, to pay that school fees. But there are moments when he will have to, he uses a physical person, a, a human being, a man, to respond to your prayer. And so the results of answers to our prayer can have spiritual expression when they partner with men, the physical men, the physical brother and sister. And that's why it is very important to have a very good relationship with people. Able look at your neighbor. You never know the person who is seated next to you. Maybe tell your neighbor, you might be my, my destiny connector. I will care for you. I will not mistreat you. Amen? The book of John, chapter number 5, verse 7. You have it? Sir, the invalid man replied, I have no one to step me into the pool. When the water is stirred, while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of him. And you know the story. This is somebody who has been at the city gate, the beautiful gate, for a very long time. And he's been asked a very simple question. What do you want me to do to you? And instead of just telling me I want healing, he started explaining things. And that's what sometimes we miss our blessing. God is simply asking for a simple faith. What do you want me to do for you? Remember, remember, God is ready and is already having an answer. And I want to confess and agree with, with Joshua Selman that promotion, breakthrough, increase are all dependent on men around you. It depends also how you treat the fellow men around you. The season you can sell your valuables, you are a business person, there is a season or the reason why you, you can sell your valuables um, and have what you call business explosion is because you are in prayer, but there is a man that you are connecting with who has an answer to your need of these goods being sold. Someone has to buy it from the other end, and it has to be a fellow man. Lastly, he also brings out a very clear important point. God answers prayer by causing us to grow. And this is what I want to conclude with. God will bring situation that will cause you to grow for you to receive your breakthrough in prayer. Many times we miss our miracles. We miss answers to our prayers because we are stagnated. We are not growing in the things of God. Your prayer session has been five minutes for the last ten years. You've never gone beyond an hour in prayer. And Jesus is wondering, where is growth? You don't remember the last time you won one soul to the Lord. Where is growth? God sometimes holds our prayers because we are not growing. Prayer requests are growth dependent. Which are supposed to rise naturally in a person's life. Depending on how you are growing spiritual, the way you are growing spiritually. How is your spiritual growth? Many times we present prayers, requests. But the question is, before you present it to a man of God, to a woman of God in this altar, have you spent time to pray for yourself? Your level of prayer, of growth, to see answers to your prayer, because when it's you who have prayed and you received an answer, your faith is given another boost. You start believing God for greater things than the ones that he has answered. In conclusion, what do we say? There are things we do not need to struggle with in our prayer life if our spiritual growth pattern is okay before the Lord. Once we embrace a, a lifestyle of prayer in the spirit, your heart, your faith is connected to supernatural power of God. God then is able to intervene supernaturally to you, to your situation, and release the desired answers that you've been waiting for. And that's what God wants us to do. I wish we'd rise up on our feet and uh, if the ministry team would be here, 
it's okay, you can pray with somebody, but I want us to go before the Lord and I want us to tell God something about our, our lives. Would you just go before the Lord and respond to this word? Would you rise up on your feet? Father, we call on your name. Thank you, Lord. May you help us to grow, to reach that place of growth, oh God, where honor and glory goes back to you. Lord, would you continue to speak to us to be able to understand the language of prayer. Help us to know you. Help us, my Father, to love you more. Help us, oh God, to go deeper in the things of God that as we wait on you, Lord, we'll be like this uh, poor widow who was so persistent. Teach us what it means to be persistent in waiting on you. May our walk, our life, our love for you be a sweet aroma in your presence. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord bless his word.